Hello everyone! In this playthrough, we're going to beat Elden Ring using Elon Musk's build. What? Yes, you heard right. We will be using this build here. Int dex build, so mostly mage with some weapon skills. Change armor from heavy to medium for fast roll or tank. Move talismans around a lot. Summon. But that's not all. Elin updated his build with the following stats. With index talismans and physic, throw moon to lower magic negation, followed by comet takes out almost anything fast. Which will be our end game build. With this information in hand, we select the prisoner class and opt for the crimson talisman as our keepsake. Having arrived in Limgrave, our starting class is equipped with the Astark, the Glintstone Staff and the Magic Limblade Sorcery. We make sure to grab the Spirit Calling Bell from Rani and then meet Rodericka, our future Spirit Tuner. Now it's time to grab the Strengthener Crystal Tier and then visit the Summon Water Village for the Militia Soldier's Ashes and the Turtle Talisman. Next, I will go ahead and take the liberty of grabbing the Spike Crack Tier and the Greenspill Crystal Tier from the Mistwoods, even though they are not part of Elan's official build. We have now reached the castle or tunnel. I have gathered all the equipment for Elon Musk's build that I can, that is in Limgrave. I have farmed for a breath shield, just for the sake of the accuracy of this build. Let's go with Intel 17 on Dex 16. I think that should work. That sound. For my wondrous physique, I'm going to use the green spill and the Strength Not Crystal tier, even though I don't know what Elan actually used in his fight. I'm simply taking the liberty of equipping those two. Later on in the game, we'll pick up the Magic tiers, and from there on out, I will exclusively use those. It's fine. I don't I just need him. I just need to distract him. At this point in the game, I wasn't aware that you could spam the magic lint blade. I thought you had to wait for the arrows to take form until casting the other, and I thought the first one would disappear the moment I cast the second. Okay. That's kind of boring, but hey. Alright. <laughs> this is not how I prefer... How I prefer my fights, but we're doing an Elon Musk build run here, so... And this is what he uses, so hey. <laughs> Don't criticize me for using summons, okay? Don't criticize me. It wasn't my choice. He has faith at 8, so let's just put that at 8 and leave it behind us for the rest of the gameplay. Okay, let's go with that. I can still level up Viger Mind and Endurance later on. Okay, onwards to Stormwheel Castle we go. There's not really that much going on for our build in Stormwheel, however, we should drop by Sorcerer Rajir and say hello to him so that we can acquire his rapier once we have defeated Godric. 
With that done, we're heading straight to the boss. Once again, I have mixed the green spell crystal tier and the strength not crystal tier in my wondrous physique. I made use of that, but it's fine. Well, since I'm running away, I guess now is a good time to summon my skeletal militia man. Come on, summons, do something! So silly. Oh gosh, that was so silly and unnecessary, all of it. Okay, I don't think Elon Musk uses Godric's Great Rune on them. <laughs> so I won't be using it either. However, before we continue to Leonia, let's return back to Roderica. So she's heading to the round table hold, and so will we. Having arrived at the round table hold, first we will visit Roger and inform him of our victory over Godric. Upon hearing the news, he will give us his rapier, one of the three weapons in Elan's build. Next, I will complete Roderica's quest until she becomes a spirit tuner. After that, I will need to collect loaf words to upgrade my spirit ashes. But before I can gather the materials from my spirit ashes, I need to attend to some other tasks. Having arrived in Leonia, let's go to the Nomadic Merchant to obtain the Nomadic Wears Cookbook 11. It allows me to craft crystal darts, which are also essential for Elin's setup. Then I will head to the Mausoleum Compound to acquire the Magic Shroud and Crack Tear, which is dropped by the Erdtree Avatar upon defeat. I don't know why he is sitting right here, I have no idea. There's a cat tree right next to me. Right next to me.
Dude, I don't see anything. Thanks, skeletal militia man. Got the magic shroud and cracked here. Next, you will grab the intelligence knot crystal tier near the road to the manor by the bottom of the cliff to the east. Then, I will head to the lift down the Ainsel River well to reach Ul Palace Ruins. There, I will gather the glow wards sprouting in the area. Although we plan to visit Rani later in the playthrough, I'll head through Carrier Manor now to gather some more glow wards in the Three Sisters. To do that, I will need to defeat the boss at the end of the area. I need to defeat Loretta anyway, as Elin uses her great bow sorcery, which is dropped upon her defeat. I couldn't use a melee in this battle, as Loretta would keep running after the militiaman, and then I would have to run after Loretta, so I gave up on that and simply depended on the magic glint blade in the end. It, it was a bit tedious to do it this way, but I simply couldn't reach her with a melee strategy. This is so bad. It's this is so fucking chaotic with the summons. It's so chaotic. With Loretta defeated, we can now proceed through the three sisters and collect all the glow wards in the area. After that, I'm making my way to Raya Lucaria Academy. Here, I can collect the marionette soldier ashes located by the cliff overlooking the graveyard. Next, we will acquire the comet, which is located in a chest hidden behind an illusory wall just before the Red Wolf boss fight. Then, we will obtain the Graven School Talisman, which Elin has equipped. Now I will head back to Roderica and enhance the spirit ashes selected by Elin. Once that task is accomplished, I will make my way back to the academy to confront the gatekeeper boss, Red Wolf of Redagon. Oh, okay. Okay, that worked. Following the battle, I'll retrieve the glintstone web blade from the balcony overlooking the academy courtyard. With the web blade in my possession, I can add magic affinity to Roger's rapier. Next, I need to deal with the carrion knight to acquire his shield, which Elin uses as well. I probably won't make any use of it, as Elin uses his shield only for shielding and does not parry at all. 
Okay, we have to do this now. Ow, 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 ow! Goodbye. <laughs> Man, usually he gets stuck up there, but I guess not this time around. I don't know what the hell I'm using a shield for. We will continue by obtaining the Twin Sage Glintstone crown above the Church of the Cuckoo by killing a tiny crystallized crab. Having gathered all the necessary items for Elan's build from the academy, we are ready to confront Ronala in a boss battle. my god, I keep locking on the wrong fucking girl! Oh god, I hate this. I will make it. Okay, let's drink this. After defeating Renala, our next step is to revisit the three sisters for an audience with Rani. Following Rani's questline is crucial not only to unlock the Redan festival, but also to gain access to the divine tower of Lyurnia. Before we continue with Kaelin, let us return back to the round table hold to grab our third pouch. Alright, we have now reached Kaled. I have respect my character. My Viker is 26, Endurance 20, Dexterity 20, Strength and Arcane we don't level up, and Faith is at 8 for whatever reason. That means the only two stats that we will continue leveling up from here on out are Mind and Intelligence. And here in Kaled, we find the Moonwheel Katana, Luzat's Glintstone Staff, as well as the Prothesis Heirloom Talisman which Elamask actually also uses. So we will grab these three items here and kill it. And for that matter, let us get started. Our next challenge awaits as we confront the magma worm inside Gale Tunnel to obtain the Moonweir Katana, which is dropped upon the worm's defeat.
All right, there we go. Moon wheel. Moon wheel, moon wheel. Hello, moon wheel. Now let's make our way to pay Gori a visit, whose quest line we need to follow for a bit. As according to Elon's screenshot, it seems that Elon uses the Prothesis Talisman for his endgame build. To accomplish that, we first need to traverse through Celia and break the seals that prevent us from entering certain nukes. While doing so, we can acquire the Night Comet Sorcery and make halt at the area boss. After defeating the boss, we will find a chest at the back of the arena containing Luzard's Glintstone Staff. So that's how he did it. Okay. Okay, Alan. I can respect that. I can respect that. Alright, here we got the Lusat's Glints on staff. Uh, I cannot equip it right now, I think, because I don't have enough intelligence, but we will get there. Okay. Having finally arrived at the Church of the Plague, we can hand Millicent the needle and receive our reward, which is the Prothesis Wars heirloom. Granting its wearer plus 5 dexterity. Okay, so we got the Prothesis War heirloom, which I believe Ellen has equipped. I think he switches around his talismans, he switches around between the Prothesis War heirloom and the Stargazer heirloom, aside from the one that he has in his screenshot. Having gathered Kayla's treasures, our next destination is Dragon Barrow before confronting Rodan. Here, I will slay the mighty snooze dragon to obtain some free runes to level up my character. I've actually never killed the big sleeping dragon before. Following that, I will venture into Fort Ferroth to acquire the Radagon Sword Seal, a talisman used by Elin, which is useless for his build. Then, it's back to Kaled for the minor archery catagom. Damn, that thing is aggro! In the minor archery catagomp, I will gather more glove boards to upgrade my summons further before facing Rodan. Alright, I got everything that I needed here, which basically were just the glove boards, so I'm not going to deal with the earth tree burial watch cat. Instead, I will return back to the round table hold and upgrade my ashes. Alright, so I have one at five and one at four. That's good enough. Having arrived at main castle, we can finally partake in the Rodan festival. Fighting Rodan will forever be my favorite boss fight. Even though he's been nerfed, I still enjoy his fight a lot. Also, he had the best boss soundtrack in the entire game.
Oh. Ja, ja, ja. Well, I don't know if Ellen must do it this way, but for some reason you couldn't use summons here. I don't know. Maybe I should have summoned the others. Probably. But that's not my style. The path has now been cleared onwards to Nokron then, where I will grab the Finger Slayer Blade for Rani and with that get my hands on the inverted statue so that I can pick up the Stargazer heirloom which Elon actually uses too. I saw something here too. Wow you are kind of hidden there my guy. Before we continue we should probably return to the round table hold to get Radan's armor, upgrade our weapons and create Renala's remembrance for the full moon sorcery. All right let us check uh, our build now. I need to remove one thing. Something. Oh my god. These make everything happy. Oh gosh. How about if I remove that? Uh huh. That would. Why the fuck does he run around like this? Why are you doing this to yourself, my guy? We won't be equipping the gauntlets. I need to remain in the medium load range, okay? Let's journey back to Nokron to seek out the Finger Slayer Blade. In the same chest at the Finger Slayer Blade, we'll also find one great ghost glove ward. Once we have the blade, we will return to Rani to deliver it, earning ourselves the inverted statue as a reward. With the statue now in my possession, I can proceed to the Carrion Study Hall and ascend the Divine Tower to claim the Stargazer Heirloom. Alright, we got the Stargazer Heirloom. Handling the blade to Rani will also unlock Rena's rise, leading to Ainsley River Main, where we can gather more glove wards. Now it's time to venture to the outskirts of the capital and confront the tree sentinel boss who guard the entrance to the capital. Defeating him is necessary to gain entry. Upon reaching Landel, I'll focus on leveling up before seeking out the next boss.
Oh, this was wrong. Not what I wanted to do. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, little skeleton man. After defeating Godfrey Golden Shade, I'll have acquired enough runes to further enhance my intelligence. Now it's time to confront Morgoth. Oh, I can. Yeah, let's craft crystal darts. I forgot to craft them. Damn, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot them. Oh, Jesus. Man, sometimes I'm just, I'm just so, so silly banana. Get these. Trust him. I want to use the ashes because he uses the ashes so I try to use them hopefully strategically I don't know following Morgoth's defeat our path would lead us to the snowy mountaintops however before proceeding we will return to the wailing dunes where we encountered Radan and explore the war dead catacombs for additional glove wards to upgrade my ashes once this task is complete, I'll return to the stranded graveyard and enter the fringe folk hero's grave to obtain the final spirit ash 
the banished knight Oleg. I delayed visiting this location earlier to utilize other spirit ashes before obtaining the A plus rank spirit. We got the banished knight Oleg that Elon Musk uses. With all the spirit ashes in my possession and upgraded, it's time to head to the mountaintops. Before facing the fire giant, acquire the Zamor snowstorm sorcery from the Zamor ruins, then venture to the mountaintop catagomb, solving its puzzles to gain access to another tree spirit and its glow ward bell bearing. Having obtained the Picker's Bell Bearing, I can now upgrade my Marionette and Militia Man Ashes. With all of these tasks complete, I can now advance toward the Forge and face the Fire Giant. I 
don't think I want to um, Why do I have this thing on? Oh my god, I hate my life Probably gonna do that any moment. Fireballs are still after me. Oh god, for fuck's sake. After kindling the earth tree at the forge, we find ourselves in farm Azula. Aside from preparing for the upcoming boss battle, our activities here involve gathering additional smithing stones, minus bell bearings, and glove wards. Additionally, I will make a detour to Nextella to collect the last remaining loaf wards needed to fully upgrade my ashes. Okay, I upgraded all of Elin's spirit ashes. Okay, uh, this is not necessary. We will switch this for the Stargazer. With these tasks fulfilled, it's time to move forward and confront the Godskin duo. Why the fuck didn't this work? Go help Oleg. 
Oh my god. Poor Oleg. Oleg carried me. <laughs> Oleg carried me and he died. He died he died for his for his what do you say? For his bravery. I don't know. But he died. He died for me. Oleg, you will be remembered. Following the battle, our journey leads us to the Great Bridge for a showdown with Malekith. No, I think I have enough mind. Yeah, that's not the point. Oh my god, I hate this. Oh, for fuck's sake! No! Oh my god, this summons me this shit so much more! summon oh my god oh leg you're blocking my way my guy god i died like two times before this because oleg was like blocking me and i couldn't evade honestly i'm just glad Elon musk updated his tweet and said that he's using the the DAX and Intel talismans because I think otherwise I would really lose my mind here. I don't think this is really doing that much. I think I could just really equip this or whatever. I don't think it does really that much, but it's still nice to have. All right, let's see how much I can actually level up with this. Uh, okay, I used my golden runes all that I had and now I'm level 107. With Viagra still at 26, Mind 41, Endurance 20, Strength 11, Dex 20, Intel 51, Faith 8, and Arcane 9. So everything is leveled up except for Intel. Intel we have to get to 65 before we head endgame. Maybe Gideon drops enough so that we can level up a bit more. Otherwise I will have to farm.
There's no other way around it. Elin uses the Crimson Amber Medallion Plus One discovered in Volcano Manor. However, I opted not to journey there solely for a talisman. So for the most part of the game, we relied on the Crimson Amber Medallion we chose as our keepsake. However, upon reaching endgame, we can descend through an open sewer grate in Landel and acquire the Crimson Amber Medallion Plus Two resting on a beam. Prior to confronting the boss residing within the earth tree, Sir Gideon of Nier emerges as an obstacle, asserting that a tarnished cannot slay a god and deeming us unworthy. In order to advance toward the earth tree, we must first overcome him. I commend your spirit, but alas, so too. Queen Marika has our help for us. Yeah, sometimes I wonder about that too with some of my runs, but this run has Oleg, so I'm pretty sure I can slay a god in this run. Not because of the build, the build is kind of wacky, but <laughs> Oleg! <laughs> Oleg is my curse and my blessing. Sometimes he's my curse because he just blocks me from evading or running. Uh, sometimes my attacks glitch through him because he's in the way but other times he's he's also my blessing he comes to my aid and he helps me so <laughs> i can't see the charm why people use summons mm -hmm. interesting interesting once again i confront Lu wielding the moon wheel having previously used this weapon during my magic run and not finding it to my liking I approach this encounter with a longing for alternative choices. Once again, I need to defeat Hralu by breaking his stance in a specific sequence. To break his stance in second phase, I must fill the stagger meter just enough. Before entering second phase, however, I have to summon my spirit ash at the right moment, hoping that my summon won't inadvertently break his stance before we reach second phase. Gosh, <laughs> my heart can't take Hualu. My heart can't take Hualu. My heart can't take Hualu. I can't. I can't take this bus fight. <laughs> all right, all right. It's over. It's over. Oh, calm down. Calm down. I wanted to use Moon, but then I was like, eh. Uh, I don't know what the timing for Moon, I don't know, I'd rather not use it, but I just stick to the guns that I know. 
We can now proceed to the showdown against the final boss. We have reached a point where our character's level, along with all the talismans, physique and equipment Elin uses, has led to our endgame build being identical to his setup. I don't know, that was a really weird earlier. We managed, we're, we're done, now I can finally go back to my room level 1 builds naked because I hate this stuff. I even took the liberty of unequipping the gauntlets because that would make everything heavy. So I ran around without the gauntlets most of the game, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but I'm incredibly happy that, that we did this and I hope you enjoyed this run.